amazing game at 4K now. This is the GTX 980 Ti Superclocked Plus from EVGA with the ACX 2.0 cooling unit on it. You can see the fancy cooling unit on there. It keeps things quite a bit cooler than the stock, and it does have a nice look to it. Um, as far as looks go, also on the top, the, the wording lights up when you put it in your system. Looks kind of nice. Let's uh, take a quick look at the front. Now on the front we have three uh, display ports and one HDMI. This is HDMI 2.0 by the way, and that supports 4K at 60 hertz. It's definitely worth mentioning because some of the competition is still using 1.4. What the hell, man? So nice. And we also have the display port. Plus notice that the, uh, the ventilation holes are large. That actually helps to lower the temperature by a few degrees Celsius. On the back we have the back plate, and that's mainly for rigidity and aesthetics, but it possibly maybe can do a little to help uh, move some of the heat away from the central area. The specs, we've got 2816 CUDA cores, base clock is overclocked to uh, 1102, and the boost clock is up to 1190. You can go farther in Precision X, we'll do that in a second. It's a 384-bit card, uh, 6 gigabytes of GDDR5, 7010 uh, megahertz is the effective rate, and the uh, memory bandwidth is 336.5 gigabytes per second. So that's that. Let's talk about heat and uh, power consumption. So at full full load, you're going to draw like 310 to 320. If you're overclocking, maybe up to 330 or 40, maybe. So just be aware of that when you're picking up your PSU. Um, as far as the heat goes, I put an overclock on this the entire time I was playing it. There was no sense in not overclocking it. So uh, you guys can see here on the screen I'm playing Skyrim. I just added 100 megahertz and I added 10%. Just I did this really like fast and sloppy. I added 10% to the overall power. Never got above 79. It usually hovered around the, you know, the mid 70s. So that's interesting, about 10 degrees cooler than a reference. And it was also pretty damn quiet. 36 uh, decibels was what I recorded with the side panel off. And then when I put the side panel on, it only raised the just the ambient in the room by like one decibel. So I've got to define R5 from Fractal and that's pretty quiet, but still I did a really nice job there. So by raising at 100 megahertz, it was able to push all the way up to around 1400 megahertz. So the boost clock is somewhat dynamic. If you're not familiar with how the Nvidia cards work, it's somewhat dynamic, but it was pushing around uh, 1400 megahertz in most games and no stuttering, no artifacts. And with an overclock like that, I got four or five extra FPS in some games. And this thing already is four or five FPS faster than the stock. So taking all that into account, this is probably gonna be faster than the brand new uh, AMD card, though I do not have one in my possession. Now this fully supports Microsoft DirectX 12, like even the newest versions of DirectX 12, it fully supports all of that. So when future games come out, it's gonna get even faster because DirectX 12 is lower level access to the hardware. So this is gonna be even faster in the future. Uh, the other thing I wanna highlight here is we have uh, NVIDIA's dynamic super resolution technology. And I didn't test that out because I have a 4K monitor already, but here's what it lets you do. Your console friends are saying like, you know, our games are, you know, they almost run at 1080p, maybe sometimes they do. And you're like, well, you know what? I'm gonna run 4K on my 1080 monitor. And a lot of times 4K ends up looking better than 1080p with the filters turned on and a lot of times it'll actually run better than 1080 with the filters on. The filters really kill your FPS. So running it at 4K and then downsampling it to 1080p looks crisper typically than running it with a ton of filters. Also, if you have a 1440p monitor, you can run it at 5K and downsample it. And this card is so fast that most games um, are just fine at 4K. In fact, as you'll see in our benchmarks, it, it's totally fine. They've also added, you know, a new um, sampling technology, MFAA, and that's kind of proprietary, so I'm not really into it. Gameworks, you know, that's more proprietary stuff that is cool, but too proprietary for my taste. Then we also have G-Sync on this card, and that is a really beautiful gaming experience. Again, too closed for my taste, but you know what? If you've got a G-Sync monitor and one of these, it really does work and it looks nice. All right, so let's get down to business with the benchmarks because that's what you guys want to know, right? How fast is it? Let's check out Valley. It is a uh, canned benchmark and we maxed it out at 4K and got 27.1 FPS. At 1080p, 92.2 FPS. The Vanishing of Ethan Carter at 4K with 8X QCSAA, that's some fancy filter technology better than MSAA. We got 29 FPS. Not exactly playable, it dipped down a little bit lower than that a few times. But here's what I was talking about. 4K, you turn off the filters and you get 71.92. Also on 4K, the pixel density is such that anti-aliasing is not exactly needed. In my opinion, it sometimes makes things look blurrier. If you think you see a jaggy, you can turn on some filters, but it looks really nice. And here's the thing, 1080p, 
with the filters turned on was 73.72 FPS. So as you can see there, 4K is about the same as 1080p. Just run it at 1080p or 4K and use their uh, you know sampling technology so that you can play it on your 1080p monitor. It'll look better. Trying to 4K 35.12 FPS 1080p 128.92. In Bioshock, this game just it's just easy, easy mode for this card. 4K 78.16 and 1080p 159 FPS. The Witcher 3. We tested it 4K with filters. It wasn't really playable, so we turned off the filters and 4K, you don't notice much of a difference. 32 FPS was the result. 1080p, you can turn the filters back on, anti-aliasing, SSAO, and still get 68 FPS. Now, I wanted to put this thing to the test, so I tried it with my modded to hell Skyrim. You guys are looking at my mod list on the screen. I'm also running an EMB. Um, <clears throat> to be exact, I am running the Potpourri EMB, but the older version, version 1.6 or 1.8, I forget. Anyway, so I've got all that stuff cranked up, and it's insane with texture packs and everything else. At 4K, 25.04, but it never dipped below 23 FPS, so that's a very smooth uh, frame rate and Skyrim is not known for for nice frame times 1080p Everything all oh my craziness 66.4 and it never went below 61 so extremely smooth uh, For Skyrim I can finally play my modded Skyrim. It makes me really happy before it was like a slideshow and I'd have to turn things down No more compromises so there you have it. This thing is uh, quite ridiculous. Uh, you'll have to just keep watching, you know, the market to see if the price goes up and down. Also, there's several different versions of this card. You can generally get a stock version and overclock it quite a bit, but you know, the ones from the factory a lot of times are only a few bucks more. So I kind of like getting them that way. They're already overclocked from the factory. You don't have to worry about doing too much on your own, and they're pretty much guaranteed to run at that clock speed. So I'll be putting this into my personal rig. This is my new graphics card. And you guys will see my build video coming up uh, in just a few days. So stay tuned for that. And until then, let me know what you think about this card. Are you guys going to get one? If so, which flavor are you going to get? And uh, let me know if uh, it's running the same in your system. Get some t-shirts, man. Look at all them t-shirts. We got cool ones. Get some t-shirts. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Get some t-shirts. Want some candy? You kids want some candy? You guys want a t-shirt? Hey. How about a body massage? Yeah. I got a whole bucket of body massages. Just gotta buy a t-shirt first and you can have a body massage. Mmm. Body massage. I shouldn't have eaten hot sauce right before I did this damn thing.